The last of the components in this Admiral's Bridge area of the superstructure is the rear air defense platform. Once again, there is a minor modification that needs to be made to this part. Simply, this forward section of splinter shield needs to be removed and opened up. What I need to do is take into consideration how it interacts with the legs of the tripod mast and then also make sure it's correctly centered so that it doesn't look odd when you're viewing the ship from the bow. Of the legs for the tripod mast, the two rear legs are going to be the most easy to determine the correct position for. They have to fit through holes in multiple platforms and they have a specific location where they need to be located in the Admiral's deck. So I can put those in place and then use that to position the rear air defense platform. As you can see, there is quite a lot of space for the rear air defense platform to move around these tripod legs. So its position is going to be mostly determined by the location of the forward tripod leg and then also making sure that it sits symmetrically about the midline of the ship. For the purposes of cutting this piece of plastic at the front of the air defense platform, symmetry is all that I need to be concerned about. So I carefully position it and use a ruler to correctly adjust it such that it is properly centered. Once I have the platform correctly centered, I use a sharp hobby knife to cut notches into the splinter shield so I have the boundaries of where I need to cut. Now that I know where the cut needs to end, I can start taking chunks out of this plastic. As you can see, while cutting, it does bend the plastic, gets a bit distressed. Obviously the blade is non-zero in width and it has to go somewhere, so it pushes the plastic out of the way. This is why I start cutting in the middle, far away from the edges, such that any plastic that does get bent doesn't matter because it's going to be removed anyway. Once enough plastic has been cleared out, I can start moving closer and closer to the edges that need to be retained, and then eventually I can make a clean cut on that edge. Once I'm happy with the rough cut for the shape and size of the opening, I then use a bar file to smooth out the edges. I then place the platform on top of the torpedo control position to check the fit. There are some minor adjustments that I need to make, but that can all be done quite easily with the file. And after I have made those small adjustments, I am happy with the condition of this component. At this point, I'm not going to paint this part. I'm going to leave that for a bit later on. I don't actually want to install it at this point because I think I'm going to have to be careful about how this platform interacts with the forward leg of the tripod mast. That means I need to construct the platform for the spotting top. This plastic platform for the spotting top will be replaced with photo etch provided by Flyhawk in their super detail upgrade kit. However, this central portion of the spotting top needs to be retained. That means I need to cut off all of this excess plastic, and there is a lot of it. This is one of those times where finesse is not required. There is a lot of plastic that needs to go, and it doesn't matter how I get it off. So I hack away at it in quite a rough fashion with my clippers. In my opinion, it would have been a lot better if Flyhawk had just provided a resin component, instead of requiring me to salvage this part from the plastic spotting top platform. Fortunately though it is a fairly chunky piece so while a little bit time consuming and somewhat annoying to cut it out it's not too difficult. After clipping and shaving off as much of the plastic as possible and then move on to a bar file to file off the last of the plastic. Although this component isn't very complex in its shape it's surprisingly difficult to keep edges perfectly level. So it does take quite a lot of adjusting and additional sanding just to finish off those edges to make sure all the angles are correct. This is just another reason why it would have been much more preferable for a simple resin component to have been provided by Flyhawk. Eventually I do get this component into a shape that I am happy with. I then inspect the component's finish and notice that there are a few notches in the side that need to be dealt with. Those can be easily filled with plastic putty and then filed smooth. The top of the tripod mask can now be glued in place underneath the platform. There is a etched recess in the underside of the platform that helps you correctly locate where this component should be. Since I filed and sanded the component to perfectly fit within those lines, it grips in very nicely. 
I then hold it in place and use extra thin super glue to bond it to the platform. You'll notice that I haven't cut the platform off of its fret. That's intentional. With frets like this that are covered in plastic, it's quite safe to handle them. If this was the type of fret that didn't have a plastic protective sheet on it, I wouldn't do this. I would remove it. But in this case, where there is plastic to protect the photo edge that I'm not working on, I'm quite happy to leave components on the fret for longer and then just use the fret as something to help me manipulate the part that I'm working on. It's much easier to hold the entire fret than it is to hold the individual starfish platform. If you don't have to touch the area that you're working on, it just makes things a little bit easier. Once I'm happy that this plastic top of the tripod mast is properly glued down, I then move on to installing the support struts. First up, I'll start with A. It's a long piece with a bend near the middle of it. Since the support strut has an almost right angle in it, it's going to be quite easy to install because it will sit flat and vertical. That's the advantage of putting an angle in this. If this was two separate pieces, this would actually be a lot more difficult to install. So good decision making here from Flyhawk. Thank you for making this one piece. It simplifies installation a lot. Once I have the strut in its notch that's etched into the underside of the platform, I apply extra thin super glue to the base of the strut to glue it in place. It looks like it lines up very well. It perfectly meets with this plastic block, which means I have sanded it to the correct width and it's at least square enough. I then repeat the process on the other side and get the same result. The next support strut that I'm going to install is the C strut, and that's because the B and D struts sit on top of it. It needs to obviously then be in place first. So let me cut that off and glue it down. You see, now as I'm holding this here, I'm realizing something. If this strut isn't perfectly vertical, when I install the B and D struts, they're not going to align properly and this is going to be difficult. So this is a situation where I actually need to install or glue down at least multiple struts at the same time. If I don't do that, then I think I will have trouble. Looking at the other struts that are available, it's B and D. D has a bend in it, and a strut with a bend will be a little bit more forgiving. So what I should do is cut out the B struts and position them with the C struts, and then glue those down together, because if it fits nicely and works with that combination, then it will also work with the D struts later on. So I'll cut out the B struts and then loosely position them onto the C strut in their correct location. With all the struts loose, but positioned correctly in their channels, I know I can now confidently glue down these parts and that they will all correctly fit together. To start the gluing, I begin with the C strut and then I move on to glue down the B struts. Now that the B sprues are glued down, I can glue down the D sprues. The D sprues go next to the B sprues and have a slight bend in them. They fit into position perfectly. At the forward of the platform, there's a similar interaction between these struts. In this case though, I need to decide if I'm going to install the E or F strut first. And I think the better strut to install first is the E strut, since the F strut will terminate against the E strut. If I do the E strut first, I'll be able to use the plastic block in the center to help align it and make sure that it is as vertical as I can get it. But now you have seen the process of installing these struts multiple times. All I do is place it in its channel and then apply extra thin super glue to the contact area to bond it in place. I do quite enjoy constructing these kind of platforms with all these struts underneath them especially ones like this where the struts are very large. It looks quite complicated to do and maybe even a little bit tricky, but it actually isn't as long as you use a technique like this. If you try and apply the glue to the components first and then stick them in place, then it becomes a lot more difficult and a lot more messy. Now that the E struts are on, I can move on to the final set of struts, the F struts. If I installed the E struts correctly, these struts will make good contact with them. Let's see how close I got them to being vertical. Well, it's not perfect, but I'll say that's pretty close. 
it's certainly close enough for me to not require any adjustments. So I'll simply glue the F struts down. Now that all the struts are installed, I will cut the platform off of its fret and then reinforce the bonds with a bit more glue. The areas where I'm most concerned are at the tips. So I apply extra thin super glue to all of the tips just to help glue them down. With that glue applied, I'm now confident that these struts are very well glued down. But I think there is a little bit of excess glue that is on these components that can be cleaned up. So I want to do that before I start painting. The advantage of photo etch and super glue is that you can dissolve super glue with acetone without harming the photo etch. Provided you don't use too much acetone, you can use the acetone to dissolve the excess glue on the surface of the photo etch without it getting into the joints and then dissolving the super glue that is bonding the photo etch together. Since there really wasn't all that much glue, I didn't have to do too much cleanup, but it was just worthwhile just to get a really nice finish. The problem with this though is that it does leave a bit of a residue on the component and now that residue needs to be cleaned off. That residue is essentially super glue that's bonded to itself instead of to the metal. So that needs to be removed before you paint it. Otherwise the paint won't have a good surface to cling to. To remove that residue, I just use a toothpick to scrape it off. One of the common questions that I get is about metal primer. I often have viewers asking why I don't use metal primer. Well, I do use metal primer. It's just that metal primer is clear, so often you don't see it, and I don't necessarily show you me spraying it onto these components because it's clear, it's boring, you can't actually see anything. But having said that, I don't always use it. Metal primer, I don't think, is totally necessary, especially on smaller components. So I often don't use it on hand railings and things like that. It doesn't make a difference. You won't be able to interact with those components enough to actually move the paint. And it's the layers of varnish that do the most protecting anyway. Since this platform is fairly large and it is going to be handled a bit before installation, I do think it's worth spraying it with metal primer. It's just going to add that little bit of extra protection. After the metal primer has dried, I can then spray this component in its color coat. That would be black, although I'm not sure if the top of this platform should be black as well. Certainly the underside is going to be black. So I'll just spray everything in black for now and then fix it later. As I spray, I do inspect the component just to see if there are any defects and I can't see any defects. I think I was able to clean off that excess glue quite nicely and I'm very happy with this outcome. You can judge for yourself in these close-up images. In the next video, I will continue working upwards in the superstructure and start making modifications to the structure that goes on top of this platform. If you would like to support this channel or see how this ship looks when it is completed, then please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Cheers.